you don't fit in Look who's in the reject bin It's the raggy dolls Raggy dolls Dolls like you and me Raggy dolls Raggy dolls Made him perfectly So if you got a bump on your nose Or lumps on your toes Do not despair Be like the raggy doll And say I just don't care One day, Claude decided to teach the Raggy Dolls French. He put up a notice which showed the day, lundi, which means Monday in French, and the time, 9 to 10 a.m., which means 9 to 10 in the morning in any language. That is when I am giving my lessons, said Claude. You are all most welcome to attend. Sad sack, hi fi, back to front, Lucy, Dotty, and Princess read the notice. But only Princess turned up on Monday morning. Où sont les autres? asked Claude. I beg your pardon? asked Princess. Où sont les autres? Where are the others? Oh, said Princess. Well, I think they're still in the bin. Dans le bin said Claude. Dans? In. Dans means in, explained Claude. Oh, said Princess. How interesting. Dans. Dans. Dans the bin. Dans, 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 da, 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 dans, whispered all the raggy dolls except Sad Sack. Claude decided to teach Princess outside. He said that that was the best way of teaching French because Princess could point to things and ask, what's that? And then Claude could explain. Oh, yes, said Princess. What fun. It sounds like hard work to me, said Sad Sack. Anyway, what's the point of learning French? We don't live in France. We live in England. And people speak English in England. Not French. Come on, said Dotty. Let's follow them. In the field, Princess was already asking questions. What's that? Une fleur. 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 Fleur, 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 whispered all the raggy dolls, except Sad Sack. They kept within earshot of Claude and Princess, but not so near as to be seen. What's that? Un arbre. Arbre. No, 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 no. Arbre. Arbre. Tree is arbre, not arbre, said Claude impatiently. Oh dear, how difficult, sighed Princess. Arbre. 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 Whispered all the raggy dolls, except Sad Sack. Claude and Princess went on much longer than an hour because it was a lovely day and Claude forgot the time. He enjoyed teaching French. It was like playing a game. He hid behind a tree. Where are you? called Princess. Easy! cried Claude. Easy! That must mean here, whispered Dotty. Do hit again! called Princess. OK, replied Claude. Where are you? Easy. Now it's my turn, said Princess. She hid, and this time Claude called out. Where are you? Easy, shouted Princess. <laughs> <laughs> they did it several times. Claude. Where are you? Easy. Claude! Where are you? Easy! Easy? It should be easy, not easy, said Dotty. Easy, 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 whispered all the raggy dolls, except Sad Sack. This is silly, said Dotty. Let's join them. Claude's not a bad teacher. I think he's jolly good, said Back to Front. C -c 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 Count me in. 
agreed Hi-Fi. And me, said Lucy. I've got better things to do than learn French, said Sad Sack. So when the others joined Claude and Princess, he went off by himself to pick blackberries. There was a sunny hedge full of them. Sad Sack began to pick, and as he picked, he sang a song. I am bored with silly old Claude. Princess is potty and so is Dotty and Lucy is a goose. So's high five, I don't know why. Back to France. Uh, but Sad Sack never finished his song. Hello? What's that? He thought. The blackberry bushes seemed very prickly all of a sudden, as if they wanted to catch Sad Sack and hold him prisoner. Sad Sack pulled himself free and began to run. Attention! Attention! Il y a quelqu'un! came the cry again, nearer and nearer. Attention! Attention! Il y a quelqu'un! Sad Sack reached a gate. It led into an apple orchard. The voice was very close now. Ici! it called. Ici? thought Sad Sack. Dans l'arbre! called the voice. Dans l'arbre, thought Sad Sack. Ici, dans l'arbre. Ici, dans l'arbre. That's not English. That's French, thought Sad Sack. And I think it means here in the tree. But which tree? There were so many. Ici. Ici, called the voice desperately. Sad Sack followed it till he came to the tallest tree in the orchard. High up, he could see a hole in the tree, and out of it peered a face. It was a doll. She must be a French doll, thought Sad Sack, because she was speaking French. But what's she doing in England? There was a ladder nearby. But what could Sad Sack do? He was too small to shift such a huge ladder on his own. The doll in the tree was very relieved to see Sad Sack. Oh, un poupé, she cried. Et un poupé qui peut marcher, magnifique. Oh, cher poupé, voulez-vous m'aider? Oh, je suis très content maintenant. Oh, uh, I understand a bit of French, said Sad Sack. But if you'll excuse me, I'll go and fetch my friends. They'll help you down. Won't be a tick. Sad Sack ran back as fast as he could, shouting, Raggy Dolls to the rescue! And in no time, because the Raggy Dolls were very good at doing things together, the French doll was safely down on the ground again. She told Claude all about herself, in French, of course. She was called Nicole, and she belonged to a girl called Anne-Marie. They were staying in England for a holiday, and the farmer had told them they could pick apples in his orchard. Anne-Marie had put her in the tree to watch, and then she'd forgotten all about her. Nicole asked Claude what was English for thank you. Claude, comment dites-vous merci en anglais? She asked. En anglais, merci, c'est Thank you, explained Claude. Thank you. Thank you, Princess, Daddy, back to front, I fi Lucy et Claude. Et thank you, sir, too, cher sad sack, said Nicole. Just then, they saw a girl running towards them through the trees. She was calling, Nicole, Nicole, and looking very worried. It is Anne-Marie, said Claude. We'd better hide, then, said Dotty. Come on, everybody. Goodbye, called the Raggy Dolls. Au revoir, called Nicole. That means, until I see you again, explained Claude. Au revoir? Hmm, how interesting. I think I'll learn French after all, said Sad Sack. Raggy Doll, Raggy Doll, Raggy Doll, are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls.
girls like you and me. One winter's night, it was very cold in Mr. Grimes' toy factory. It was so cold that it turned all the raggy dolls' noses blue. Oh, heck, I'm shivering so much, said Lucy. I think my legs are going to drop off. Well, well, when's it going to get warmer? asked Hi-Fi. Never, said Sad Sack gloomily. It'll be winter forever and ever and ever. Don't be silly, said Dotty. Let's do some exercises to keep ourselves warm. Ready? One, two, three, four. 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 All this exercise is making me dizzy, thought Sad Sack. Back in the factory, Claude made the raggy dolls some hot chocolate. I suppose I feel a bit better, admitted Sad Sack. But my nose is still blue. Let's make ourselves hot water bottles and go to bed, suggested Back to Front. All the raggy dolls agreed that that was a good idea. So Lucy counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven hot water bottles. Then they all settled down for the night, except Hi-Fi, who wanted to see if he could hear any aeroplanes in the sky. Sometimes he could hear pilots talking to control as they came into land. It was very exciting. Come to bed, called Dotty crossly. But Hi-Fi was listening hard. Shh, he cried suddenly. What is it? whispered Lucy. I can hear something. A strange n -n -n noise, said Hi-Fi. Huh, it's called silence, said Back to Front. You're so used to having headphones on, you've forgotten what it sounds like without them. Huh. But Hi-Fi went on listening. And now they could all hear something. I picked it up when it was far away, said Hi-Fi. Is it a dragon? whispered Lucy. Of course not, snapped Dotty. It sounds like the donkey up the lane, said Princess. No, not loud enough. It is the horn of the motor car, said Claude. I don't think so. Shh, shh. <coughs> it's a g -g -g goose honking, that's what it is, said Hi-Fi. A goose in distress, agreed Dotty. R -r -r Raggy dolls to the r -r rescue, cried Hi-Fi. And forgetting all about the cold, the raggy dolls rushed out into the night to look for the goose. The moon was full and it was almost as bright as day. It's a bit spooky, said Lucy. No problem, you can hold my hand, said Back to Front. That way, neither of us will be scared. Can anyone see the goose? asked Dotty. The honking was growing fainter, as if the poor bird was losing heart. said Hi-Fi again. He twiddled a knob on his headphones and listened harder than ever. Va -va 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 that way, he cried, pointing to a gate that led into a ploughed field. Attendez! Attendez! Over there! cried Claude. And there was a white shape far away in the middle of the field. It's the goose! exclaimed Dotty. Be careful, warned Lucy. It might bite. But there was no danger of that. The great bird lay in a heap with its eyes shut, quite exhausted. It's not a goose, said Back to Front. It's a swan. Poor thing, said Lucy. It looks worn out. You, you, you people were worn out too if you'd f f flown all the way from Siberia, said Hi-Fi. Siberia? Where's that? asked Sad Sack. Dotty explained. Siberia is in Russia. Every winter, swans fly all the way from Siberia to England, where it's warmer. Sad Sack felt the tip of his freezing cold blue nose and decided he didn't understand swans at all. Warmer, he thought. I don't call this warm. 
I call this freezing. Oh, look, said Lucy. Its feet are all covered in mud. It must have been looking for food and got stuck, said Back to Front. It's exhausted. Whatever shall we do? cried Princess. Save it, of course, said Dotty. Fetch a blanket, someone. It was hard work rolling the swan over onto the blanket. Its feet had become frozen in the mud. Back to front, took out a screwdriver from his overalls pocket and chipped away at the frozen mud while the others pushed. One, two, three, heave, said Dotty. One, two, three, heave. At last, the swan was on the blanket. No, 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 now we must get it to the pond said High Five. That was even harder. And when they got there, the pond was frozen too. Go, said Back to Front. It's so strong I can stand on it. Careful, Back to Front. You should never walk on ice until you've tested it with something. Voila, a stone, said Claude. That is what is needed. Back to Front, stand clear. Claude threw the stone as hard as he could. The ice splintered like broken glass. The noise woke the ducks, who were sleeping amongst the frozen reeds. Where? What's happening? Where? A fox! Help! Hide! Quick! Where? Quick! Where? They squawked. But when they saw the raggy dolls and the poor white swan, they changed their tune. Where? How can we help? Where? Dotty told them what was needed, and in no time the ducks had tapped round the hole with their beaks, making it bigger. Then Claude took off his scarf and dipped it in the icy cold water. Very carefully, he wiped the mud from the swan's feet. Et voila! Now he should be able to fly again. Well done, Claude, said Dotty. But I'm afraid your scarf is ruined. Never mind, said Lucy kindly. I'll wash it for you. We ought to give it something to heat, said Princess. Yeah, but what? asked Back to Front. I've got a stale bun, said Sadsack. That'll do nicely, said Dotty. Princess softened the bun with water and Hi-Fi pushed the crumbs into the swan's beak. It was a real team effort. After a while, the swan began to eat, but its eyes were still shut. Quack, quack. We'll watch over it, said the ducks. So the raggy dolls crept home to bed. They were very tired and didn't wake up till late next morning. Allez, allez, wake up, mes amis, cried Claude. I will make you a nice hot breakfast with the eggs and bacon. La, 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 let's go and see how that swan is getting on, said Hi-Fi. But, but, but before we have b -b -b breakfast... Good thinking, agreed Dotty. I suppose it is a good idea thought Sad Sack, even though he was hungry. When they reached the pond, they found that the hole had frozen over again in the night, and the great white swan had gone. There was just the blanket left on the cold, frosty ground. But on the blanket, the raggy dolls saw seven beautiful feathers, as if the swan wanted to say, Thank you, Lucy, Hi-Fi, Back to Front, Dotty, Princess, Claude, and Sadzak, for saving my life on a cold winter's night. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind, like the raggy dog. Raggy dog, raggy dog, made him perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are.